I hope you can see my screen. So we're looking at the same screen. So um, welcome again. And my name is Velita Hills. Welcome to the launch um, Writers Virtual Platform Creative Writing Group. And um, so we have a self-published book um, called Velita and Friends Creative Writing. Okay, so hello. So this is our book. Um, which um, we're going to be speaking about today. And um, <clears throat> so there are certain items in the book that I'd like to um, let you know about, and we will talk about these as we progress into the launch. Okay. So here, our beginning, um, how we began. The authors have contributed to the making of the Lita and Friends creative writing book. We'll be reading poems and chapters of what they have written. It will bring a flavor of their writing skills. <clears throat> so the authors are myself, Valita Hales, we've got Menzi McInnes, author Stephen Barnes, Ruby Tolok, author Kenneth Viver, or Viva, author Anthony Dickens, author, and Rosaline, author. Okay, <clears throat> so moving on to the next slide, I'm mindful that some of, of the authors are not here as yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that they'll be able to can join us. We write because we want to share our thoughts and get responses from others. It is essential to let others know something they might not have thought necessary. These things can be events of occasions that might not be planned, still because of the temptation to reflect upon the matter before us, it becomes essential to express through observations and provide a response and happenings. When situations become consistent, they drive a passion for writing consistently. A habit of writing develops, thereby making us think of new ways. Sorry, I just had to make this um, Putting ideas with new ways and share with others who want to read about them. Toni Morrison, an African-American novelist and professor said, if there is a book that you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, then you must be the first to write it. Okay, number one, writing to express yourself. When people are stressed out, or unnerved by certain situation in their lives. Writing can tame their qualms. Writing provokes change. Writing can also be used to provoke change. Writing to gain attention or novelty. Writing for education purpose. Writing a book. So here is a response from the first author. Um, Velita will share some of her writing with you and she chose to read from Shunting an original found poetry alongside other poems. So please um, listen, I'm going to read some of my Shunting poems. This one is called Cast Down up once more. Stories own your interest to stories, occasions special and seasonal, in Valentine's, Christmas, anthropologies, you may be, but one's obvious of the unusual, move something, choosing forward or back, go clock, day. 
queens about the Wednesday or unusual, more of a choosing, sitting about thing, one occasion, special with coincide story, your emotions or theme. Halloween, we have as, and giving your time. Okay. The next one is called Wind of Hope for Occasions. A creeping child, times anxious we know. Some have faced the shrouded. Those are fairs. Occasions, special use always. Competitions, magazine. Some are Easter and Halloween. The day, Daniel, Saint Ash or Sunday, holiday. Bank August, you help me. Occasional, out of rest or season, particularly to occasions. The Thai can, it enriches together, works well. Some are here, but fair to link. So these are some of my shunting poems, um, the original poems which I created myself. And <clears throat> I've got some of the poems which I'll, I'll read, but um, do use your chats to make any comments you wish to. This one is called Beat, Beat Drum play violin, silent limp squeeze, run, run, fountain dashed, chest caved, shoulders popped twitch, silent shoulders, move fingers, head still, eyes, blare still, rumble stomach, fight looks at legs, Run, heart pull, stamp muscles weighing down. Lead, lead, bumping, screaming. Roll, roll stomach, kidneys dark with fright. Push, push, play stomach. The violin plays, the heart trickles its chords. Run, run stomach. Still neck, still violin, plays harp chords in my chest. Stay still, my nostril. Sing. Run, run harp chords. Run, run harp chords. Sing tunes, violin. Likes lips still. Silent voice, black brown. Eyes the drum of breath. Beat, beat, timely beat violin harp, silent drum, run, run stomach, lay still, eyes drained pulp, blink pulp, flush pulp eyes, blink still, heart beat, play violin heart. Put a little into it. I'm not into it. Okay, I'm just running into another poem. And this one um, says, I'm not myself anymore. Care not, I'm not myself. Pity I sit, sadly I stand. Stretch my feet, my arms long. Upon I pondered till in calm. Oh, I was where I had left it. Today is a day long into a heart of stands. Shall I stay with it? Staying close, it means everything. Shall I stay with it? Sunken, I stayed laid. Stay, I hate the pale play. Frail when I stand. Stayed, I pity myself. I see the sky staring, stark in me. I bundled into the cloud, 
dark black, brown, deep blue, I lose. Oh, sure will be there in it, popped up in and out. So these two last poems that I have written, I've, I've talked about, these are poems I wrote during the pandemic in 20, 2020. And um, <clears throat> moving on, I have another poem. It's called The Little Candle. Little candle burning, stem black, curved flames stick to my heart, pity. Little candle, flames leaving me, strike my fingers, burn, scorched, pressed, dried. Sides leaked, seeping like a fountain, midst of clouds like an ocean, swelled with pride breaks its banks, dribbled its leaves black and withered, swam in a pool, sticking with heat, natural light. A little candle burnt its wicks, fell the autumn leaves, dropped at its roots. Harmless, little candle, sway, sway, night lay. Still sweat drained, lit a candle, black leaves, melted seat, drain lit a candle, drain, drain, drain lit a candle. So this also is from the earliest part of the pandemic when there was a lot of uncertainty. And I woke one morning and I thought, heard the news and I thought, you know, what is happening? So hence this poem, Little Candle. And I had a small little candle burning as well, just as well. So the poem was around that little candle. Okay. So I'm going to move on. And right. So the next person that we have coming up, we have Stephen. So Stephen will read a chapter or and poems, a poem for one of his submission. But before Stephen begins, he will tell us his reasons for his choice and what motivates him to write. Please leave your questions and comments in the chat for Stephen to respond and show your appreciation with an endorsement. Thank you, Valita. So well, well, well read, L. Well done. Thank you. So, um, tell you a bit about me. Well, I joined this writing group in 2020 in the summer, and the reason I asked, I joined, was because Valita asked me to. However, my mother was an amateur writer. She she used to write um, articles and letters and send them to magazines and uh, uh, newspapers. And she wrote uh, accounts of her outings, and she wrote poetry. So she was she was that. And I know full well that you know, I have to have her seal of approval to do writing and that. And probably she really is my probably number one inspiration to write because I remember that that was something she had an aptitude to do. So kind of I'm following in her footsteps now. In this group, Sue knew my mother, so she would she would know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me think. The prior to prior to joining this group, I I wrote one poem in two thousand and nine, which is in this book, and that was really mainly to support my mother. And prior to that, the last writing I really did before being in this group was back at secondary school in the early nineteen seventies when I used to write essays. So that really, it's a really, you know, it's all been really mainly since I've joined this group. So in the late 1970s and the early 1980s and even the middle 1980s, I used to work in Holborn in um, central London. And I used to walk up and down the Strand quite often to go to Charing Cross Station. And I used to walk past the entrance to Aldwych Underground Station. And at that time it was still 
a working station in use. I never used it myself because I used to use the nearby Holborn station, which was much more convenient for me. But when I when I was thinking about subjects to write about, so um, I remember my London days and uh, being in Holborn and walking up and down the Strand. So I researched all which underground stations, a fair bit about it, and I looked at quite a few new YouTube videos. And it's one of really the main London underground abandoned ghost stations. So that is what I'm going to read to you now. Okay, so all all which underground station. The construction plans for Aldwych Underground Station started in 1898. The station opened for public use in 1907 and was initially known as a strand. It was situated on the end of the Piccadilly line and was a terminus station that initially ran between the strand and Wood Green. The station had two operational lifts and a dark green and cream toll installed by Leslie Green. He also designed many other tube stations on the Piccadilly, Bakerloo and Northern Line. The station was meant to serve theatre goers in the Strand, but was never well used. It was renamed Aldwych in 1915. During the Second World War, it was closed as a tube station. During this time, it served as an air raid shelter for residents. It was once used to put on concerts to entertain the public. George Formby and Gerardo performed there. The British Museum used it to store some of its exhibits. Ex 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 the Elgin Marbles, the Elgin Marbles, sorry, were stored at Aldwych Station during this time. Aldwych reopened as a station in 1946. Passengers' numbers were never high, though. In 1962, the train services were reduced to peak hours only during Monday to Friday. The station was finally closed in 1994. The old lifts needed replacement by then, and it was thought not justifiable for the cost involved. Since then, the station has been used for film sets. There are guided tours open to the public. The station has a history of spooky occurrences happening on its platforms and in the nearby tunnels. There have been reports of strange phenomena by railway workers, passengers, and station visitors over the years. On the station site previously stood the Royal Strand Theatre. This was demolished to make way for the new station. It was reported that one actress took umbrage at losing her work home. She is one of the ghosts that allegedly haunt the station. Margaret has been given as a possible name for this actress. Another lady mentioned has been Estelle Bryce or Estelle Bright. Whether this person is the actress or another actress is not known. Another possibility is an elderly lady called Alex, Al, Alice Humphreys, who was thought to have been electrocuted on the live route station at some point in its history. She could be another ghost who haunts the station area. Another possible ghost is called Tom. He is a former railway worker from the 1880s who died from a seizure in one of the nearby tunnels. But this could have been before the station had been opened. As far as I know, there are no official records to prove or disprove these theories. All which underground station has its history and secrets to keep. And that's in the book. And the main reason I wrote about all which is because, as I said, I used to regularly walk past there for quite a lot of years. So it was familiar to me as an entrance. So that is my... Um, contribution. So, Valita, I'm going to hand it back to you now. Okay, thank you, Stephen. That was well read and so um, informative. Um, great. Thank you. Um, has anyone got any comments um, for Stephen? And in the chats, we can speak. So, one of the things, that, a question I wanted to ask you, Stephen, is um, Aldrich Station. Um, are, are they still having exhibitions and um, tours around around the station? The reason why I ask is um, all the time. I mean, most of the times I, I, I pass there, or it's, it's always seemed to be closed. You know, obviously it's closed because of the phenoms that go there. But any developments or since are people still talking uh, about the phenoms? Well. 
as, as, as far as I know, it's still it's still guided tours going on because I think a friend of mine went for a guided tour there last year, and I think they keep an old underground train park there somewhere in one of the tunnel, on one of the platforms, some some of the time at least. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's used for film sets occasionally. Something is one of the ma main stations that they open up still. So as far as I know, it's still used. But of course, it is closed normally. You, when you go past it, it would normally be closed. Yeah, unless there was a tour or something happening there. You know, because it's not not a working station anymore. So that that's as far as I I, I know about it. Yeah, I've never actually been in it. Funny enough, all the mm -hmm. times I've walked past it, I never went in because I always used to use Holborn. Because it's like a, a little single branch spur. It was. It, it didn't. It wasn't. It was no need for me to use it. Um, and that's probably one reason it was closed. You see, it didn't. Didn't. It just wasn't enough people. Who, it was convenient for them to use it sort of thing. So it's kind of in disrepute as um, you know, as, as quite a lot of other stations did because they, they just weren't used enough. Okay. But yeah, it's still being used used for tours, as far as I know. Yeah. So if you investigated. And you found a tour and you booked in advance, you'd have to pay a, you'd have to pay, of course. It's only worth it if you're really interested. But yeah, yeah. still being used as far as I know. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. That is really Thanks. useful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Really important. Thanks. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'll move on to the next um, slide now. And uh, I must read the, the motto for today right, a writing world. A Writers' virtual platform, creative writing group. So th this is our theme um, of this webinar. Um, so I'm going to call on Menzi. Yes, okay. I'm here. Oh, hi, Menzi. <laughs> nice to hear you. Okay. So okay, before Menzi comes, um, I'll just get an introduction to Menzi. Menzi will read two poems. One from one of his submissions, but before Menzi begins, he will tell us his reasons for his choice and what motivates him to write. Please leave your questions and comments in the chat for Menzi to respond and show your appreciation with an endorsement. Okay, thanks Rolita. Um, hello everybody. Uh, before I actually start to read my poems, I'm gonna say, uh, I, I wasn't, I started in, uh, well, 2020, started the group in 2020. Um, but I wasn't really supposed to be. I wasn't really supposed to be here. It was really my wife. But what happened was that because of the grandkids, um, she was busy with them, and I said, "Okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll just fill in your slot." So I, so I came on as a sort of a third wheel, as it were, um, and actually enjoyed what I was hearing. And it enjoyed the way Valid actually presented the whole thing. And um, the following fortnight came around, um, and I said I came back. And then um, basically, and that the rest is history. Really. The rest is history. Um, what, what I find happening was that it actually helped me very much during the the lockdown, especially during the lockdown. And personally, I don't really take life very very seriously, and I found it a very very good outlet for um my sort of creativity which suddenly i realized was being uh held back by me sort of suppressing it and with valita's help it's just sort of you know just sort of come out as it were. so i'm going to read two poems the first one is a lesson of life um and i wrote this this is one of these things that i always tell my kids one of the, the one of the things about about life is that nothing is given to you, and you've got to find a way through the system. If you're going to sit down and expect somebody to be handed to you, it's not going to work. So here it goes. I constantly tell the tale of the grasshopper and the ants. The hopper he loved to have fun. The ants were very scant. He played and danced and loved to have fun. His mantra was YOLO. The ants they had back breaking work, carrying leaves without furlough. The hopper haunted the procession. Stop working. I'll play while you dance. 
They paused, shook their heads, kept working. He looked and he must scance. How silly can you be, he shouted. Weather's fine and the breeze is cool. If you worry about tomorrow, you are a silly fool. He danced until his hat fell off, until holes appeared in his shoes. He fiddled until a string broke. He laughed at the ants. How rude. Autumn, so, sorry, summer followed autumn, followed by winter's snow. Nothing left but the clothes on his back. Nowhere left to go. Rain beat down mercilessly. Snow froze his bones. Trailing footprints two feet deep. He had nowhere to go. He wasted time with the violin. He wasted time with the dance. He lived a reckless, careless life. He could do with a cash advance. The ants were dancing merrily when a half-dead grasshopper fell by. They warmed him up and fed him as frozen tears fell from his eyes. Always use your time wisely. Street think strategically. Always plan for your future. Try not to be like me. And that is also one of Aesop's famous, um, famous uh, what do you call it, <coughs> proverbs <clears throat> about the grasshopper and the ants as well. The next one. Um, is one that I wrote for my for my grandchildren. And it's, you know, just, yeah, it's one that I wrote for my grandchildren. And I just sort of, you know, just sit down over the two years that we had sort of locked in and just, your mind just sort of wonders, really. And I just sort of penned this, um, but this took a, a, bit, a great deal of editing, a great deal of editing. And it's called My Ambitions for You. I looked into his eyes, he looked right back at me. He is my son's son. He might not get to know me, he is family. I will tell you about the ladder, tell you about the wall, tell you that the higher you climb, the harder you might fall. As I start to build the ladder, I might lose some nails or cut some wrong shorts. I might even cut off a finger, lose my base of support. They won't tell you about, they won't tell him about the ladder, but they will tell him about the wall. He'll have to work twice as hard, so get a softer fall. He will see others scaling walls with relative ease, while at the foot will be thousands who thought they were not born to succeed. No talent, no ambition, no focus, no depth. Only talent is for running, rapping, rioting and getting into debt. The wall is yours to scale, but that gets you five bricks up. Enough to feed your family, take a holiday and shut up. For some, the sky is the limit. For us, the limit's the sky. He's going to need my ladder. I'm leaving it for him to climb. I'm telling everybody about the ladder. One built, once built, it lasts lifetimes and your great, great, great grandchildren will thank you for the ease of their climb. So never build a ladder, so, sorry, some never build a ladder, some build, use and pull up after them. Some build one every day, some throw away and condemn. Don't worry about the wall, just build a ladder you can climb. And if yours is too short, you can put yours on top of mine. And thank you. Thank you. Well done, thanks. And any question for Menzi? Please write it in the chats. Um, that was really good, Menzi. Thank you. Very really good. And I, I like your introduction, how you know you came to join the writing group and you, it was your wife then. So it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Please thank leave. You. Yes. <laughs> so please leave your yeah your questions in the chat. We'll we we'll get back to that later on after. Yeah. Oh, okay, so well done. We'll move on to the next slide. So um Alex is Kenneth. Kenneth there? 
Okay, so let me let me move on then. Um, okay, so sorry, I must have left out one. Okay. Okay, so no, we have a there's Rosalie. I just hopped over <laughs> that. Okay, so Rosaline. So Rosaline will read two poems yeah. from her submissions. But before Rosaline begins, she will tell us her reasons for her choice and what motivates her to write. Mm -hmm. Please leave your questions and comments in the chat for Rosalie to respond and show your appreciation with an endorsement. Over okay. to you, Rosalie. Uh, oh, thanks, Valetta. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I started writing poetry for about the last 10, 12 years, but I had stopped for a while and during the lockdown, I just felt bored. <laughs> so then I, I started writing again. And I knew that lots of people were struggling, including me, like emotionally and spiritually and, you know, because like, why this and so I, so that inspired me to write this uh, poem, there, There's Always a Door. So I'll start with that one and then I have another one. I'm using a screen reader because I'm visually impaired. So you might have, ha there might be some pauses in between. Okay. Please bear with me. Okay, Rosalie. Uh, okay, there's always a door. When you have sorrow and go through pain, there's a door to gain. When you go through, through sickness and disease, there's a door to ease. When you are suffering and no one cares, there's a door to help you bear. When you are grieving and feel hurt, there is a door for comfort. When you are struggling and cannot cope, there is a door to hope. When you don't believe and often doubt, there is a door to get out. When you feel stuck and things go wrong, there's a door to move you along. When you are lost and you are left behind, there is a door for you to find. When your life's in a mess and you feel broken, there is a door to open. When you frown and feel down for a while, there's a door to smile. When you feel rough and your life's tough, there is a door to laugh. When things don't work out and you feel destroyed, there is a door for joy. When you're tired and are stressed, there is a door to rest. There's always a door for you to sow. So that's one. And the next one I'll read is the moonlight. And this one also I wrote one day when I was just sitting in my lounge and uh, because we couldn't go out and meet family and friends, I just felt a bit isolated during lockdown. So th this is uh, what inspired me to write The Moonlight. What seemed like a cold, what, let me start it again. What seemed like a cold, lonely, dark night as I gazed through the window in silence, in silence, no sound of a soul or anything except the sound of the howling wind and the musty smell in the air. The leaves fluttered harshly in the trees, making everything sound creepy to freeze. My face frowned as sad memories flooded my mind, bringing sorrowful tears that trickled down my cheeks. Then a little light shone gently on my face. It felt like a touch of a loving warmth, like a gentle loving embrace. I looked up in the sky 
and there was the golden full moon in all its glory, rad radiance and splendor flowing like a veil over me, graciously bracing its light. And that's when I felt just peace. That's it. Thank you. Thank you too, Rosalie. That was well presented. What do you think? Going to comment? Anyone wants to comment verbally now? Or shall we leave it to later on? Yeah, Rosalie, that was re. Sorry, I heard someone. No, no, I said later on, maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> great. Oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah, thank you for that. And if I return to the slide, um, this is to Kenneth. Um, Kenneth is not with us today, um, but I know Kenneth has um, written um, and contributed in his book, some of his chapters from, from his book. Um, and it's, it's, in, it's in the, the our published the Leet and Friends book. So you can see the chapter or chapters that Kenneth has written really, um, I would say engaging and, you know, um, sci-fi fantasy sort of, but with a heavenly sting to it. So uh, I think it's moving on to, into some form of um, appraisal through heavenly images. So Kenneth is, is not here, you might join later, but that, that's for Kenneth um, for now. And I'm going to move on to the next slide. Um, so this is for Ruby. Is Ruby around? Okay, Ruby is, is not here to defend or to um, appraise her, 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 her wool and knitting. So Ruby contributed um, to the book in the form of um, some photos and some writings about wool. And she is a natural um, knitting or knitter of wool. And from memory, I, I recall her presenting um, the knitting machine as one form of um, engaging and working with the wool, you know, wool comes from the sheep. So the sheep, which was presented in the original format and which is in, in the book, um, signifies um, the journey that sheep goes through from, from birth and you know, growing their wool. You know, sheep tend to be very um, humble, but they, they, they are delight because they have the wool, wool and keeps them warm. And so that is, um, constructed and entwined and, you know, manufactured into wool. Um, there is a sheep farm. There was a photo of um, some sheep, some sheep farmers going to the farm with their, with their sheep. And there were little humble things, you know, trotting along behind and um, heading to the market for whatever reasons. Um, we can only think exchange it for um, whatever exchange barters. I call it in the olden days there were barters, whether it's barter or money, I'm not sure, but it was really a delight to actually see the process of, of knitting and how wool becomes part of a commodity um, in, in our household or, or the shops, we get it from the shops after it's been wined and um, made into garments. So the process has been um, a fantastic journey and um, really appealing to all, all who love to, to knit um, and using different colors. Um, you can see these bright, lovely, vibrant colors of wool. Um, knitted hats used in the winter and, and scarf and so forth, mittens for children and, and you know, lots of other things will, can be used for. Um, it would have been better if Ruby was here to explain because that would show some natural connection to the wall. 
Um, but I, I'm, I'm hoping I've done Ruby justice um, to, to, to this evening. But still, um, leave your messages and comments about wool if you love wool, if you've knitted wool and, you know, you, you've done something fantastic, you know, share it with us um, in, the, in the chat so we can also comment on that as well. Okay, so um, moving on. Um, so, all right, so um, is Anthony there? Okay, um, Anthony is not here, but Anthony has contributed as one of the authors to, um, to the, our Billet and Friends creative writing book. And he's got some really vibrating um, work poems and some verses of experiences in different parts of his life, his encounters. So it's a great contribution and good writing. So just as everyone else, but he's not here to, you know, to, to um, supplement his writing. Um, you know, when you do happen to purchase the book, you you see the, his his writing there. So, you know, we, we are really focusing on, you don't have to be a, a, a writer, a beginner writer is just as good because we, most people started um, in the group as beginner writers or new writers and um, grown into um, the accomplished writer because they're not authors in their own right. You know, as a group, we write as a group. And so anyone is welcome to, to, to be, you know, part of a group and, you know, write, write with us. Um, because that's where the groundwork began. Um, so um, I, it's, 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 a real, it's a real essence, you know, in, in the journey of, of writing. So I'm coming to that too quickly. Um, we're not um, finished as yet. So um, I'm gonna go into the chats. Um, I'm gonna go into the chats. And so uh, to have a look, um, there's a few, few comments. Um, We've had one here from Menzi. Um, well, well done, Menzi. Who's written this one? Um, Rosaline, Rosaline, and Velita. Uh, thank you for that. That is really encouraging, really inspiring. Um, oh, she should go from the top. Okay. So Rosalie says, um, very good, Velita. Um, it's making me feel relaxed. Oh, thank you, Rosalie, for for that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's a great comment. And it's nice to know that we are feeling relaxed. Um, the pressure might have been on, but you know, yeah, hopefully there was a space in that where you could feel relaxed. And Sue said, I have a book of Lily's, Stephen's mother poem, lovely for Stephen to follow in her footsteps. So yes. So great, Stephen. It sounds, would you like to comment a bit about that, uh, a little bit more on that soon? Okay. Um, can't hear Sue. Stephen? Hello? So I, I'm, un, I'm unmuted now. So, um, yes, Lily, as well as writing um, poems, uh, which uh were usually um based on her uh christian faith um and it was i think a minister at their church stephen will correct me if uh if i'm wrong who who published them in made them into a a book but she also would if they went uh if she and her husband ron went for you know a walk in the country, you know, she'd write about it afterwards. And, you know, and, um, you know, and I think that probably added to her in, enjoyment, you know, writing about the flowers and the birds, and, you know, what they'd seen and what they'd done. Wow, that's great. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Sue. Right. Did you want to add any comment to that, Stephen? It sounds like you had yeah, some funding. So, so, yeah, so, so, so Sue's so, so right. Um, I, it was a, 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 a local couple that ran a senior young at heart, senior citizens, which is called Young at Heart Group. It was pro probably about 12 years ago or so. They, they 
they knew she wrote, my mother wrote poetry and they told her to give her some of her poems and they'd make a sort of like a pamphlet book of it and that's what they did they put it together and they printed it all and they did quite a lot of copies they used to they gave a lot of what a lot out actually just for people in the group at the time yeah that's how come it happened she had a sort of mini little book of um poems and my mother used to send them out once sue's got one obviously my mum sent one to her she used to send them out to people I, i've got one still which i i, I use i've got uh, some of her poems in but yeah my mother did write poems i found some back from the 1940s when she was young a few she wrote them then she gave it up and then she went back to it really after my father passed away in 2000 she went back to writing really then so yeah she, she did so yeah she was, uh, that that's really um as i said that's why i sort of following her book because she had the aptitude to do it so as I, mm. if i any any skill or anything i've got I'm, I'm sure it comes from her not you know that's where i get it from so yeah but yeah but so it's right she did used to go out on outings and things like that with my, my my father and she used to write about it and write it all out and do it and sometimes she used to type so she used to type when she was out of type well, she used to type things up yeah the poem she wrote used to write to newspapers and uh magazines and do art, little articles and things like that so yeah so i mean she was writing on and off for, for years but m more so after my father died you know the last last decade or mm -hmm. decade 15 years of her life really yeah but yeah yeah wow wow okay. that is yeah thank you thank you for for yeah. for that stephen and um for sue the soul so thank you okay so Again, another comment from Rosalie Dice is, um, well done, Stephen, I've learned something. I'm sure with this additional um, comments from Sue and Stephen really clarifies, that's a really good story there. Um, Barbara, Barbara says, I, I love Stephen and his mother's work. I'm honored to have him read what Street, My Central. Read Street, yeah, by Central. Okay, okay. So that lives on um, and it's great to have that. Oh, okay. So there's another one said uh, from Stephen. Thank you, everyone. So thank you, Stephen. And Rosalie again says, well done, good poems. Uh, so love it, Menzi. Okay, Menzi, um, great work there, great work. Hard work, great work, good production outcome. Um, Rosalie, um, all of you are very good. Lovely evening. Great. Thank you, Rosalie. And so again, repetition of door gives idea of hope. Yeah, yeah, yes. And um, and just said, thank you. Um, Stephen, um, well done, Menzi, Rosalie, and Belita. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks, guys, Rosalie said. Um, sorry, Stephen, I spelled your name wrong. <laughs> Hardly noticeable. Mm. And Menzi says, that's true. If I can write a poem, anyone can. Oh, yes. Oh, great, great. Um, and this one from Rosalie again. I read the book, great. Great, okay. Oh yes, you've read the book. And Stephen, Barbara said, Stephen reads at my center. All right, okay, good, good. That's fantastic. Okay, so um, that's a really encouraging, you know, um, the fact that um, we, we've almost come to the end um, and uh, it's a so, such an awesome feeling to know we have, we have actually produced our first, um, series series one of our of our writing um, book we are working on series two so series two here we come next year here we come with mm. other, another um and that should be greater than this one you know <laughs> you always say the first thing you remember the first thing that you do any other thing is after is like a story in a line you know moving stage by stage and so yeah so we are on a stage thank you all for that and so i'm going to move on to the next um the next slide this is uh okay um right so this is a thank you slide have i missed any any of the uh 
Um, no, I haven't missed any chats, just it's there. Okay, so this is a thank you slide to everyone who's um, attended uh, our Writers Virtual Platform, our creative writing group, our first book. And it's, it's compiled by, as you know, the group. Um, so it's really fantastic working with the group, within the group. You learn so much when, you know, we, you, we work together, we share ideas, um, we can break things down, change it around, twist it around, and use that to, to bring out our writing in different forms. We use discussions, we use writing articles, poems, um, clips of learning how to write, and those are really helpful little, um, I would say, tips. And, and more than just a tip to help us to write the way we do to bring out today, make it a success. Okay, so the book that we just talked about, which this webinar is about. Um, okay, so you'll be able to can um, purchase that on Amazon. Um, but also I have a, a website. You can take this down and um, you know search whenever you're, whenever you're ready, when you feel like obviously, you know, there's a lot there and pretty engaging too. Um, I'll read it, read, it, read it out for you. It's www.exposurebooklaunch.com. And where the book can be purchased is on Amazon. Um, so you have the uh, Amazon, Amazon link here, um, which you can, it will take you straight to the book. So the book is also in, um, it's in two forms, so we got the the um, the i i book. You can get that, and you also have it in um, a physical form. So um, you, you can you know, also, you know whichever your choice is, and you can email me, and that is my email address, Velita H at exposurebooklaunch.com. Um, so you can email me there, and other addresses. You can text me, my telephone number is on the website. So you can send me texts if you feel comfortable sending texts rather. So also I've got an Instagram page, um, <clears throat> which is here, Belita um, H-E-L-B. So E-L-B is Exposure Book Launch. And I've also got a Facebook page, um, which is, www.facebook.com slash um, the letter ELB. And I've got a LinkedIn page and you can find me there. So it, it's really great to connect to people on the media, social media and see what they're doing. And I know some of you, you know, um, access the this webinar today from the invite on social media. Thank you too for coming. And if anyone else is listening, thank you so much. And um, we've come to the end. So if there are any questions that you wish to ask, um, please feel free to ask any question. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. All oh, right, so we're, we're back now. So it's yeah, so nice to see your faces again. <laughs> All right, so um, we'll come to the end. Um, our next um, writing group um, is going to be next Friday. Um, it's fortnightly, so it's next Friday is the next one. Um, and it's at six o'clock. So I usually send out the link. You can, you can pick that up on LinkedIn or you know, um, <clears throat> on, on the websites, um, on the connections that, um, on Facebook as well, you can pick that up, or even on Twitter, you can pick that up. Just as well, can I say, oh, I was just going to say, can I say thank you for letting me come? <laughs> oh, that's all right. You are welcome anytime. Anytime <laughs> soon. Thanks for coming. So thanks for coming, Barbara. <laughs> Yes, thank you for having us. That's Alita all right. And, uh...
Stephen speaks highly of you and, and the book group. And so I'm very honored to be here and I'm proud of Stephen. And thank you for all the work you do with the aspiring and the writers here. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you too, Barbara. Okay. I was going to ask the um our the the eight four eight number is that our new number now for for logging on? Yes. Okay. Right. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to change. Like it's not going to change like next week or or anything like that. No. No. It's the one that we have been using for the past I three weeks. Three. Weeks three yeah. yeah. All right. Good. All right. Thanks. That's okay. Thanks very much for Lita anyway for running the group. Yeah. Yeah. And hope